Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night, about 8.06 p.m. local time here in California. December 21st, 2024. Days are starting to get longer here after today. In terms of daylight, latest activity shows a 5.9 earthquake here to the Alaska region, right around the uh, Lucian Trench there, subduction zone of the uh, Pacific and the North American plate. Just coming in to the seismograph stations uh, a few minutes ago. A uh, pretty decent earthquake. I don't see anything showing up here on the seismograph uh, reading as far as an any S waves yet. Surface waves, but they should come in eventually. So we'll watch for that here. Getting uh, Definitely getting some movement up here uh, recently in the last couple of weeks. It's died off, I would say, here in the last couple of days. But it uh, looks like things may be starting to kick back up here. We'll have to watch that. But uh, decent earthquake. 5.9, 14 miles deep there into the subduction zone. Also a little bit of activity stirring up here in Northern California with uh, 2.6 there in the uh, Petrolia area. I think I've seen that earthquake showing up here on the seismograph station right there. I believe that's going to be it. Uh, potentially, maybe that's a new one there. That was at about uh, 850, roughly about the same time as that Alaska earthquake struck. So a little bit of a plate adjustment going on. And, uh, you know, 850. Right, not picking up this earthquake there uh, a few minutes prior. So I think we had to go back just a little bit further on the graph here to see it, but it just doesn't uh, it doesn't extend all that far back in terms of the uh, save data. Uh, Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet out there. Let's go ahead and give a, a glance at the uh, trimmer map here tonight. Cascadia trimmer. See if there's anything going on here. Zero. So this makes day number two of no trimmer activity. After a pretty hefty period there of trimmer activity across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Right about the time we were seeing that uh, seven-pointer and a series of uh, interesting events out here across California. 5.9 could trigger things into motion out here. We'll have to watch it. It is at the northern end of the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate boundary. Bay Area down here south of the bay on the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault picked up a 3.6. Earlier this evening, originally coming in as a 3.7. Uh, that's, uh, again, on the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Park field segment down here, probably overdue, getting close here to seeing a six-pointer. Uh, we normally don't see six-pointers there on the creeping segment. That's why they call it the creeping section here, because the plate tends to uh, um, slide past each other with little earthquakes instead of building up, you know, time and time. Uh, days and days and months and years of built-up strain to produce a large earthquake. So we just get these little ones. The bigger ones uh, occur in the locked areas around the park field segment southward. But uh, I say we're overdue here for a six-pointer because they, they come around the, about 20 to 22-year intervals on average there. And our last one was back in 2004. So we're looking at 20 years now. So we should be uh, expecting a six-pointer here in the future for that area. Of course, Southern California, who knows when that big one's going to happen. Uh, a little bit of activity right off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault this morning. 2.7 and a one-pointer. Uh, yeah, a little interesting activity. I mean, it's it could happen at any time. So movement around the Bakersfield area as well early this morning. No major swarming across the Southern California area for now. Uh, a couple earthquakes here in the Ocotello Wells region. Some ones, some smaller quakes. No major swarming there across the Brawley Seismic Zone for now. And as we look at, uh, across the rest of the country here, minimal movement. Not a whole lot happening there across the uh, uh, anywhere east of the Rockies, aside from the oil fields out there, continuing to see some earthquake activity. Some further larger activity in the uh, Port Villa, Vanuatu region. This is where they had that 7.3 earthquake here a few days back. Looks like a little bit of movement following that six-pointer up here around the Solomon Islands. So it looks like things are starting to work its way around the plate boundary here in terms of built-up strain and accumulation pressure transfer here across that area. It's been uh, been rocking and rolling back and forth here in this area recently. Uh, Solomon Islands has been in the uh, gap zone in terms of the lack of activity. So that's why I say things are starting to fill in as expected with a five-pointer out there right now. 
Uh, a little bit of movement following that. Uh, looks like they downgraded it there to 5.8, 3.5. Uh, fairly recent, so it looks like things are starting to move here. That 5. Point, these large earthquakes like that can definitely stir up um, the activity out here. Now that's uh, interesting here. It only shows zero kilometer or zero miles below the surface. It's underneath automatic status, so this could get revised. Let's give a quick glance here at the magnitudes herself. No stations contributed, at least here that uh, they're allowing us to view. Interesting. So we'll just have to take their word for it uh, for as the magnitude goes. Let me see. Yeah, I'm still not seeing any type of surface wave there. Most of the time, uh, when an earthquake of that magnitude would come in, we would see some type of seismic wave, but uh, I'm just not seeing it come in. So we'll have to check back on that. All right, uh, what else we got out here? Japan region still seeing some movement. Really nothing big there for now. Bouncing back and forth here between the southern end of the Japan Trench here and the northern edge of the Kuro Cam Chatco with a little bit of movement here along the Aleutian Trench with a 3.6. That's why I say things are starting to uh, adjust here around the area. We've had a couple days of quiet activity there in California. I think things are starting to pick back up here in terms of seismic activity. We'll have to watch it. <coughs> Excuse me. A couple smaller quakes there outside, outside the uh, San Jose area in the Santa Cruz Mountains region this morning. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii, what's going on out there? Not a quake or a peep or nothing. That's a little odd, wouldn't you say? I mean, nothing? Nothing at all is going on? No small microquakes? Let's go check it out here real quick, see what we got here for the uh, latest data. <coughs> Never fails. Luckily, I have a cough drop right here on the desk, so... Still got this lingering cough. I don't know what it is. It's weird. All right. Let's go ahead and check this out. Nothing showing up there on the USGS map. So let's check out the individual seismograph stations here. Um, there's one earthquake at least. Another earthquake. There's a couple earthquakes in there, but nothing being reported. Some fluid movement out here. That looks like uh, some magma on the move. That thicker line that you're seeing there on the seismograph stations. That's definitely uh, what looks like some fluid movement. Interesting. Okay, so the volcano still had a yellow and advisory. Uh, the deformation data up here across the summit and the upper east rift zone. We'll take a look at that real quick. Looks like it's starting to go back up. After a couple days there of uh, deflation, now we're rising back up here. Things uh, starting to stir back up around the Kilauea volcano on the Big Island. So um, we'll watch for increasing earthquake activity. Right now there's not a whole lot, but it, they're showing some signs of... Uh, some fluid movement there on the graph, magma movement. Uh, New Zealand, some older movement quakes there across the area. Nothing big in the region for now. And uh, man, look at down in South Africa, five pointer and a three point, a three pointer. Not too often we get these uh, earthquakes of that magnitude down there. Just outside or north of the Cape Town region, a pretty considerable distance here. And again, the uh, magnitudes of uh, earthquake activity really don't happen all that uh, often out there if we look on the map. As you can see, pretty, uh, let's go back here to the graph here real quick. I wanted to show you guys there. the, um, is this going to be it? There we go. Well, yeah, it's not showing a whole lot of, uh, earthquake activity out here. Is this the right map or no? This is just the interactive one, but, oh, there we go. Historical seismic activity, uh, way down in Cape Town. I guess there was a bigger one, a little bit, uh, older, but, you know, far as way up north here, just... Kind of odd, right? A really uh, strange quake out there, 5.3. We continue to watch that. Got uh, some interesting activity out here for sure. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, uh, pretty quiet up and down the board. Let's go ahead and check out space weather activity here real quick. See if there's anything of uh, 
Any noteworthy value? Getting a little bit of proton event right now, it looks like, on, on the southern area, solar polar re southern polar regions. That, uh, I'm trying to think where that may have came from there. It's a little interesting. There has been a, a number of far sides uh, solar explosions here recently, so it's possible there that uh, could be some protons that even even though it was on a far side event uh, maybe got blasted off of the sun it's just a little weird nothing's been uh, earth directed here recently so we'll have to watch that and see uh, there's that far side explosion there it was an M7 but uh, that it's possible it could have been a little bit bigger uh, since it was uh, just behind the eastern limb out there uh, either way we got a, a I think a pretty dandy of a sunspot out there that's thrown off CMEs left and right. We'll have to watch that as it comes uh, into the Earth-directed view here in the coming days. Right now, the uh, overall flare threat, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 65, and the X flare around 10% chance or so. Nothing, uh, nothing spectacular going on there for the Aurora forecast. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, numerical models out here for the weather forecast here and um, stand by for a second I had to send Missy Mimi's a, a little message here crazy man we got some late night deliveries we're expecting a package here from Amazon and normally they don't, they don't ever deliver at you know after 8 o'clock at night pretty crazy but uh, they are I gotta make sure, make sure she gets that. Uh, weather models here not quite loaded up yet on the graphs, um, but what we do have is a series of storm systems here set to impact the west coast with some heavy rain, mountain snow as well. A number of systems. There's at least three or four, maybe five systems that are set to uh, impact the west coast region with uh, some much needed rainfall. We'll take it, and. Um, you know, that's, uh, that goes to about the 28th there of December. Who knows what's after that? Uh, I know January is sign signaling in some colder air coming down from the Arctic uh, regions and from Canada entering into the States. Uh, looks like a pretty significant cold spell coming up there. We'll keep an eye on that as we get closer to the first or second week there of January. Another aftershock coming in following that 5.6. It got downgraded again from a 5.9 to 5.8, now to a 5.6, following a review status here. Surprisingly, they put out a little notification here on uh, Aftershock forecast. Interesting. Let's see if they got any origins up here of uh, magnitudes. Nothing yet. I don't get that. That's weird. All right, anyway, I'll continue to watch it, folks. It looks like things are starting to kick back up here a little bit. Um, keep an eye on California. Obviously, we've got some adjustment going on. And when things start to move out here, you know, I've noticed it. It really starts to move. So we need to be on guard here. And, uh, of course, we'll be covering this if anything else pops up here for now. Enjoy your Saturday night. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning for the uh, Sunday morning update. Take care, folks.